Welcome to this, our third video about Peter Kralich's portfolio analysis. In this video, we'll look at the final two quadrants and explore the broader implication of Kralich's ideas. First, a reminder of the basic model. The spend portfolio is dimensioned by two variables, the importance of purchasing and the complexity of the supply market. Next, specific strategies are developed for the categories in each quadrant based on an understanding of the balance of power between the buyer and the supply market. Where the buyer has market power, strategies are designed to harvest value for the buyer. When the supplier has market power, strategies are designed to change the market dynamics and increase the buyer's bargaining power. Now, let's look at the leverage quadrant. The truth is that most suppliers do not want to be commoditized, and consequently, suppliers develop strategies to avoid being in this quadrant. The result is that there are fewer categories in this quadrant than you might expect. But conversely, many procurement strategies seem to treat all categories as if they were leverage. So let's look at the market conditions for a category to be classified as leverage. Firstly, the category should have significance to the buyer, perhaps due to the value of spend. Do you remember the Pareto Principle? The leverage quadrant and the strategic quadrant normally represent more than 80% of the total spend. So these are higher value categories, and the market in the leverage quadrant is usually relatively simple, which means multiple acceptable suppliers, perhaps more than three or four, and relatively low switching costs. So when the buyer enjoys the balance of power, the strategies seek to harvest value from the market. In this case, value equates primarily to cost savings. Yes, I know, price and value are two different things. But when buyers have savings targets, the leverage quadrant is where most of the savings are going to come from. So strategy five is the go-to-market strategy of online auctions, RFPs, and bid and negotiate. Variety reduction, volume aggregation, and supply-based consolidation are the tactics that help harvest value. Interestingly, the pure application of Kralich's ideas would suggest short-term spot buying rather than longer-term contracts. But most procurement strategies seek to achieve economies of scale through entering into longer-term arrangements. But what if the balance of power was shared with the supplier? If that was the case, the buyer could enter into a cooperative relationship with the supplier. This would be strategy six, but in my experience, it's very rare. The challenge of supply market analysis is to understand when the buyer does not have market power and to understand what may be done to change the market dynamics. So let's look at the final quadrant, strategic. Kralich saw this as the key quadrant for the development of strategic behavior and for good reason. This is where most companies source their competitive advantage, whether through cost leadership or differentiation. It's where public sector entities can contribute towards their strategic outcomes, whether through achieving value for money or realizing policy goals. The point is that categories are not in this quadrant by chance. They are here as a result of business strategies pursued over several years of patents, of licenses, acquisitions and mergers. The typical character of the supply market that makes it complex is that there are few suppliers, perhaps only one. The suppliers have large market share. There are barriers to entry that restrict market entry to competitors. The point about this is that short-term tactics are not going to change the market. This is not the place for 90-day procurement plans. This is why Kralich wanted procurement on the agenda of the senior leadership team, so that the buying organization could adopt longer-term strategies to try and change the market dynamics in favor of the buyer. The categories in the strategic quadrant are likely to be amongst the highest spend categories for the buyer with high importance. Does this mean that the buyer is a big buyer and has lots of market power? Not usually. Unless you are the biggest buyer in the market, it is likely that the balance of power lies with the suppliers. Accordingly, strategy seven seeks to reduce the chance for the supplier to behave opportunistically through entering into a cooperative relationship with the supplier. Longer term relationships and cooperative behaviors are designed to reduce the buyer's risk and align the two organizations' goals. This may not work, as typically the supplier may have more scale than the buyer. If the cooperative approach does not work, then strategy eight involves reducing dependence on the supplier and repositioning the category into the leverage quadrant. 
Strategies to do this might include sponsoring a new entrant into the market or changing the specification to open up competition to other suppliers. I recall two airlines faced with a monopoly aviation fuel supplier at one airfield. Both airlines decided to invite another supplier to enter the market in return for a guaranteed share of their total business for a number of years. After that period, both airlines would act independently and ensure that competition was sustained. That sort of decision cannot be taken in the procurement department alone. Kralich finished his article by addressing a number of prerequisites to make change happen. Remember he called the article, Purchasing Must Become Supply Management, and the journey required a number of enablers. People. Procurement people have to be entrepreneurial and able to influence key decision makers, both inside and outside their own organisation, and coordinate others. Process. The procurement process must be flexible enough to allow coordination of key strategies and create a portfolio of strategies, not a series of deals. Technology. The information provided to the procurement department needs to be reliable and allow early involvement of procurement thinking in major projects. I think many of you listening to this would echo that. Of course, using the phrases people, process and technology, I've reinterpreted Kralich's language to make them a little more contemporary. But that his ideas are just as relevant today as they were 30 years ago shows what a visionary the man is. So there you are. Eight strategies that help elevate purchasing to procurement and a roadmap for change. Good luck on your journey.